You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Way of Energy with your host, Ken Lee. Ken is here to help you discover the truth through an integration of the science, religious, and spiritual technologies. Through these technologies, Ken will empower and inspire you to perform at your peak. So now, please welcome the host of The Way of Energy, Ken Lee. Hi, I'm Ken Lee, and this is The Way of Energy. How Emotional Energy Guides the Way We Live Our Lives. You are listening on BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and now on iHeartRadio, spanning the globe with over 50 million listeners on the World Wide Web. I welcome listeners to call in and offer their observations and opinions, too. Who knows? You might learn something about yourself. So if you'd like to call, please call in at 866-451-1451. I say again, grab a pen. The number again is 866-451-1451. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for being here. Now, over the past few weeks, I have been laying down the foundation for analyzing the energy levels of current media events. We looked at uh, suppressive and anti antisocial personalities, the social personalities, and then we looked at the energy levels of conservatives and liberals, and by their own definitions, their words, not mine, and, and we formed some analysis around all that. Now, remember, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I have no degrees in mental health. I'm an observer of human behavior. I'm referencing proven technologies against my personal observations and formulating conclusions according to my education and viewpoint. Consider it information, and you can decide what is true for you. Okay, last week I was scanning through Facebook, and there was a story about Tony Robbins. Where it is, and it was something that he was talking about with the Me Too movement. Now, I like Tony Robbins, so I, I had to check it out. And a guest was saying that Mr. Robbins was criticizing the whole movement of the Me Too movement. And he wanted to remain engaged because he didn't want to be misinterpreted. And he made the distinction that she was using it differently than some other people. He also suggested that it is easy to see that when a person gets angry and attacks, rarely makes you more safe. And he demonstrated this, that fighting against something only adds more resistance to it. And he continually stressed these things that the Me Too movement was fighting for. He said it for assistance, to help, protection, prosecution, and the like. He said what he was concerned about was that there were some there that was creating victimhood. See, some people were staying at the victim level. And if people are using it that way, they must stop because being a victim is not empowering. And he was making the distinction between the two-edged sword of any movement creates. He says there's an empowering side and there's a disempowering side. And every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And he constantly attempted to make the distinction with behaviors people have. The patterns that we have control our lives. See, there are patterns that make you happy, and there are patterns that make you sad. There are patterns that make you angry, and there are patterns that make you grateful. So, and you can use, you can choose your patterns as well. Or otherwise, you let the culture choose them. And if you do that, then you become part of the problem. So, but here's the thing the guest couldn't hear him for what he was saying because. One part, she had to be right, and she tried to guilt him into apologizing for speaking his truth. 
she said he was doing a disservice to the movement. And they talked back and forth, and he kept saying that some people misuse it. See, he was making the distinction between some people were misusing it, but she remained believing that he was talking about all women in the entire movement and th that were misusing it. But he continually tried to make the distinction that he was not saying that the movement was wrong. He is saying everything has a consequence, and you want to use things in the way that doesn't addict you to your problems and you don't want to be a victim. He went on to say that if you live a pattern of victimization, who is it going to hurt? Well, it hurts you and everybody around you. But his guests continued to go back on her belief that he was talking about the entire Me Too movement and he never did. This is a this is a very powerful statement that he makes here. And he was going to say he wasn't going to say I'm sorry for something that he was not sorry about. He was not going to say I'm sorry just to comply. That is living as a victim. He's about freeing you from your pain. That's what he was talking about through this whole message. And. Should he say, I'm sorry for someone misinterpreting something that he said? No, he shouldn't apologize for somebody else's misinterpretation. So he was emphasizing here that every tool can be used different. There are good uses for tools and there are evil uses for tools. How we know the difference is how the person lives their lives. Or in my technology, what is their average resonating level? So his final question was, do you want significance through problems or do you want significance through growth? If you stay angry and do nothing, your anger will go away because you'll grow tired of being angry. He said, if you are crying and he does nothing but stay present, eventually you'll stop crying because that's the way your nervous system works. And these are some things that he was talking about during his discussion with his guest. Now, I'm suggesting to you that being a victim, being angry and attacking never solves anything and it hurts everybody in the end. Now, there was a person that, uh, that commented about this. His name was uh, Cliff Townsend. He was one, someone who commentated or commented when on uh, uh, Megyn Kelly's show that he, was, he stated that it was her that misunderstood what Tony was trying to say. Tony was talking about the six human needs, one of them being significance. And he was not ta talking against the Me Too movement, but that's all she was hearing. And he tried to explain it to her differently, but she just could not understand his point. He said many times that he wasn't against or talking about the movement. He was only talking about some women who used it in the wrong way. Women who used it to feel significance. He clearly said that not all women did this, but he was using the ones that did as an example. So this distinction that he was making with what was being said here is the determining factor into telling whether a person is at level one or at level three or four. So, and this was a very hot topic over the weekend and many people on Facebook, you could see that the level four or five energy stance that Mr. Robbins was taking and the level one and two perspective of what Mr. Robbins was talking about, you could see that their response and their inability to make the distinctions between what he was talking about and what he meant. There was a lot of confusion here. And what we're going to talk about as we move along through this is how level one and twos can't see or hear or understand, or they really have a lot of difficulty understanding the level one and two energy levels, or sorry, they, they have difficulty understanding the level three, four, and five energy levels. Anything that is above level two, 
they have a lot of difficulty understanding that, and we'll go through that here in a minute. So when we get back, we'll talk about that a little bit more. I'm Ken Lee. You are listening to The Way of Energy on BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio, and we'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language, and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C., Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back to The Way of Energy, how emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. I'm your host, Ken Lee, and you are listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio and iHeartRadio. Woohoo! If you'd like to call in and be part of the discussion, you can call in using 866 451 1451. Please grab a pen. The number again is 866 451 1451. All right, before we went on break, we were talking about Tony Robbins and the use of the Me Too movement as an example of something that can be used to give you the basic human need of significance. Now, I love this example because it clearly identifies how level one and two energy levels cannot hear anything above that. So I want to go through the video and point out some areas where level five is operating and level one and two could not understand what is going on. So let's take a look at the start of the discussion. Now, first, What was not on the video was the context of what they were talking about. And what Tony was talking about was the six core human needs, specifically in this case, the need for significance. Now, what that means is the needing of significance is the need to have meaning for your life, feeling special, expressing pride, feeling needed, feeling wanted, and having a sense of importance and feeling worthy of love, okay? And these are all things that we need and we like to have in our lives, of course. But the disempowering way to get significance includes putting other people down, gossiping, relating sad stories about yourself, being a martyr, being a victim, or rebelling. And the empowering way to get significance is self-leadership, doing volunteer work, achieving a goal, or obtaining mastery in your field of work and play. So we can feel the difference between these two levels. One, level one, and the other is level three or higher. Now, what he was saying is that needing significance is part of human nature, thus making it a need. You can sense this in your life. Now, you want to have meaning, right? You want to feel significant, of course. If someone tells you you're worthless, wouldn't that upset you? Yeah, especially if you thought that about yourself anyway. So what he was saying was just the facts. People need to feel significant. 
Now, there are two ways for people to feel significant. One is creating. The other is destruction. Both are parts of the same tool. Hammers create when used by a carpenter and hammers destroy when used by a road worker, as in a, using a jackhammer. So, But it all depends on the context of its use and what is in the mind and heart of the user. What did he say that actually made the guest stand up and say something? Well, we really don't know, but because that's not on the video. All we know is the context he was speaking under and the interaction with the guest. So, but here he wanted to remain engaged, but he didn't want to be misunderstood. Now, here he was operating at level five because he was wanting to understand and be understood. He was calm, confident, demonstrating his sense of fulfillment. He has demonstrating his strong interfaith, and he was focused on both of them. His core thought was reconciliation, as illustrated by his work with trying to help her understand. The guest, on the other hand, wanted no part of understanding. Even with additional data and him saying many times, I'm not knocking the movement at all. They are doing great things. His concern was some people use it as a weapon and remain victims to gain significance. He constantly attempted to make the distinction with behaviors people have within the movement. Some are empowering and some are creating victimhood. He also observed and could see the differences in the people, places, and things. Some people do things, some people do others. And how do we know one thing, how do, how do we know? How do you know that one thing is and if it's working or not? Well, there are patterns that have control over our lives, and he was attempting to make the distinctions between them. He said, there are, there are patterns that make you happy, there are patterns that make you sad, there are patterns that make you angry, and there are patterns that make you grateful. He was saying, you have to choose your patterns well, or otherwise you will let the culture choose them for you. If you choose them for yourself, he has no problem. But if the culture chooses them for you, then you are a follower and not a leader, which in the context of his class, powerful leaders is what he's creating. Now, the problem with this incident is that the guest could not see the distinctions between some and all. She could not follow the context of the conversation. So what this tells me is that there was something that was said long before this incident that she didn't understand. There is a misunderstood that occurred sometime before this or and she is a solid level one victim, which limited her ability to see the context above that level. Of course, level one and two's listening here are not getting this yet. So, so let me bring it down to a level of one and two understanding. So let's say you have an apple in one hand and poop in the other. Okay. One is better for you than the other. How do you know which one is better for you? Well, one is fresh and new, full of nutrients, and the other is nothing but digested food, okay? And when we get back, we're going to go into why it is important to be able to tell the difference between these two and how, why it's so important for you to be able to do that with, um, with energy levels. I'm Ken Lee. You are listening to The Way of Energy, and we'll be right back. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. 
Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the real realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Welcome back to The Way of Energy, how emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. I'm your host, Ken Lee, and you are listening on BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. If you'd like to be a part of the discussion, you can call in using 866-451-1451. Grab a pen. The number again is 866-451-1451. Now, before we went on break, we were talking about making distinctions between things and knowing the difference between things and how important that is. And a simple example that I was making was the difference between apples and poo. Now, one is empowering and the other is not. Both are different forms of the same, same thing. Just one is better for you than the other. Which do you choose? Well, I hope you choose the apple because it is better for you. Now, in relating that to the Me Too movement, there are some people in the movement that are disempowering. And there are some in some people in the movement who are empowering. Which do you choose? The path of victim or the path of leadership? This is the distinction that Mr. Robbins was trying to make, that there are some in there that were choosing the path of victimhood and there were some that were choosing the path of leadership. And in the context of what he was talking about, he was using the ones that were disempowering as an example of significance or the, the type of disempowering significance. Now, there's nothing wrong with the Me Too movement. It does great things. Please continue to do what you are doing and empower women to take a stand, be strong, and report abuses whenever they occur. But know that in everything, there are bad actors and good ones. Choose what side you are on. You want to pick the one that is empowering and that will pull you out of victimhood. And this is very important in identifying level one and twos, mainly because they speak only in broad generalities meaning that they don't make distinctions between things. Now, in Dianetics, they call this engramic thought or thinking or thinking in identities. One thing equals another thing equal means A equals A equals A equals A. Now, this is fully explained in the onscientology.org website under Dianetics in Introduction, but I will read a little bit about it for you right here. Now, they're talking about engrams. Now, the reactive mind does not store memories as we know them. It stores a particular type of mental image picture called an engram. And these engrams are complete recordings down to the last accurate detail of every perception present in a moment of partial or full unconsciousness. Now, there is an example of how an engram is created, and we're going to explain it to you here. It's like, for example, a woman is knocked down with a blow to the face. She is rendered unconscious. She is kicked in the side and told she is a faker. She is no, and, and that she is no good. She says that she is always changing her mind. And a chair is overturned in the process. There's also a faucet running in the background. And a car is passing on an outside street. 
okay? We'll say that that incident creates an ingram. Now, the ingram contains a running record of all these perceptions. The problem with the reactive mind is that it thinks in identities, meaning that one thing is identical to another. So its mathematical equation would be A equals A equals A equals A. Now, a reactive mind computation about this ingram would be something along these lines. The pain of the kick equals the pain of the blow, equals the overturned chair, equals the passing car, equals the faucet, equals the fact that she's a faker, equals the fact that she is no good, equals the fact that she changes her mind, equals the voice tones of the man who hit her, equals the emotion equals the faker, equals the faucet running, equals the pain of the kick, equals the organic sensation in the area of the kick, equals the overturned chair, equals changing one's minds, equals, so you get the point. Every single perception in this engram equals every single perception. Everything equals everything inside this thing. There's no distinctions between any of them. They are all the same thing in the reactive mind, which operates fully at level one and two. Now, these things are present in all the levels, but it's fully operational in level one and two. So when, we're, when you hear someone say an entire group, everyone, white privilege, America is racist, all Muslims, all immigrants, the, the United States – the Me Too movement, everyone knows, everyone does, so forth and so on, shows the inability to make distinctions between things in the context of what is being discussed. And the inability to make distinctions is the number one attribute of the antisocial personality, which is they speak only in broad generalities. So we must keep a close eye on those that say such things. When you find them, Challenge their words. Ask the questions to find out specifically who they are referring to. Who is everybody? What was – and, and check what is actually said. Does it actually conflict with what was said and the actions that followed? If it doesn't, then it falls into another attribute of the antisocial personality, which is to alter, to worsen communication when they relay a message or news. For example, when the media was saying that the president wanted to ban all Muslims from traveling to the U.S., was that actually what was said? And did the actions match it that followed? No. It was only certain countries that were banned. There were distinctions made between the countries that had ties to terrorist organizations and those that did not. So why is this important for us to make distinctions between the energy levels? Well, if you would, if you want to talk about that, call 866-451-1451. Grab a pen. The number again is 866-451-1451. Okay. You see, energy levels are a way for us to identify who we can trust, who will be our support system for you and your ideas and the way you want to live your life. When observing the media in this way – you will be able to distinguish fake news trying to form public opinion and contrary to what has actually happened, and you can get a little closer look at the truth. When you can take out all of the level one and two energy, you have a more accurate account of what happened. Many times you wind up with nothing significant. For example, like the collusion between Trump and the Russians. Now listen to the reports. They made broad generalities. Uh, saying things like the Russians, the Trump campaign, and the media dealt mainly in bad news and general suppression, and they were invalidating counter-information. Like the fact that no one from the Trump campaign contacted the Russians to mess with the elections. They altered to worsen news, sensationalizing it when it was leaked. And at the end, they buried the truth at the bottom of the story. And every single story had within it a statement that said something like, we have no evidence that this actually happened and no one to verify this information. If you don't believe me, just listen to them. Listen to all of those accounts of that. And you'll find that it would be 15 to 20 minutes of speculation and rumors and then 30 seconds of the truth. 
We have no evidence of this actually happening. Still, after 15 months of unlimited investigation resources, no information of any collusion and no evidence of any collusion has ever been identified. This should tell you something about who you can trust. So while you're watching the news and you're paying attention to the news media, try to look at it and take out all of the things that are broad generalities or something that is being said to make it sound worse. And when you take out all that information, you might find something that's a little closer to the truth. OK, so right now we're going to take a break. And when we get back, we'll continue our discussion on this. I'm Ken Lee and you are listening to The Way of Energy. We'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia daly Lipe is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com. Com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back to The Way of Energy. How emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. You are listening on BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. I welcome listeners to call in and offer their opinions and observations, too. The number to call is 866-451-1451. Grab a pen. The number again is 866-451-1451. Now, before we went on break, we were talking about how important it is to make the distinctions between the energy levels because it's important for your survival, meaning that it helps you identify who you can trust. Now, I use many different technologies in my analysis because I've been studying humanity for the last 40 years. There are many things about what we do at different energy levels that are completely predictable and have patterns, just like Tony was saying in the video that created such an uproar. Now, here's the things to look out for. A great, <laughs> great minds have encountered violent op- op- opposition from mediocre minds, as Albert Einstein said. And level one and two's view of the entire world is level one and two energy. So if you are saying something that they can't understand, they will view it as an attack and will see you as being at level one and two energy even though you have every intention to create and cooperate with them. See, and here's a, here's a unique distinction between uh, the, the level one and twos, and some, sometimes it's difficult to understand that, that from whatever level of energy that you are resonating at, your worldview equals that. In other words, if you're at level one, you think that everything is a victim. You are a victim, everybody else is a victim, and they're all being victimized by somebody else. And everybody else is that way too. At level two, you see everybody and everything is angry. Any, and anybody that's happy, you think they're faking. 
at level at level three, you want you you are at the uh, responsibility and forgiveness level, and you can't understand how people can't forgive. You see, and how people can't take responsibility for themselves. And you also look at things like everybody can cooperate and they can take responsibility. If you're at level four, you can see that you want to win and you want to help people and you can't understand why the lower levels, people at one, two and three, don't put forth the effort to help everybody, to be of service. At level five, you know, you, you, you want to be at peace. You, that's your main concern. And you see the whole world is peaceful. And when you see something contrary to that, you can't understand why people aren't peaceful, why they can't be peaceful. You see, so at no matter what energy level that you are at, it's difficult for you to see where people are coming from, from the different energy level. Now, when you're at the higher levels, it's easier for you to see at other levels because you can drop down there and visit it for a little while. But the lower levels cannot see what's happening at the upper levels because they haven't experienced it yet. Okay, that's the distinction between the two. And that's something to keep in mind as you're learning more and more about energy levels. Because if you are working with somebody who is who is at a, a level one and two energy and you are at a level four energy, they're going to have a difficult time trying to understand you. So you'll need to bump down to the level one and two energy levels so that they can hear and understand what you are talking about. Now, the way that we help people come up from there, we'll discuss that here in a minute, but w the way that you help people get come up from there is you give them a glimpse of what it looks like at that level. You can't explain it to them because they, they really won't understand. It's like you trying to explain to somebody about what it's like to ride a bicycle. They won't understand it until they actually get it, okay? So I want to uh, take a moment and bump down here for a minute and talk about the gun situation that we were discussing uh, the last couple of weeks because it's another clear identification on how the voices of level one and two energy are, are working within that movement and how we can make the distinctions between the one and twos and, the, and, and above. OK, so we know that the level one and twos are loud and clear and want to remove all guns from the citizens of the United States. Bottom line up front, that's their goal. Now, do they actually say that out loud? Well, some of them actually do, but mostly they think, say things like, no, we are for the Second Amendment. We truly believe on it. We just want comprehensive gun reform, background checks, limitations on age for, por for uh, purchasing firearms, a ban on assault weapons, no mass ca capacity magazines, no bump stocks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, anything that they can think of to actually infringe on your absolute right – it's not a privilege. It's a right to keep and bear arms, but they want to infringe. Um, OK, so tell me something. Is murder against the law? Is violating an order of protection against the law? Is selling drugs against the law? Is the possession of drugs against the law? Is drunk driving against the law? Is stabbing people against the law? Is there any law that you can think of that is violated by anyone other than a criminal? then it should go without saying that only criminals break the law because it's their nature. They're level one and twos. You put a fully automatic 50 caliber machine gun in the hands of an honest man and he will never kill an innocent being with it. Never. End of line, absolutely not. But you put a rock in the hand of someone who wants to kill or murder someone, there's nothing you can do to stop him. He will find a way. A few thousand years ago, a young boy on a street corner killed a giant of a man with a rock. Of course, he felt justified for his actions. He was facing a giant after all. But also before him, there were two brothers fighting in a field for approval and one was killed by a rock. So the problem, the problem of gun violence isn't the guns. It's actually the people and the mind of the person behind what is wielding the tool. So when we get back, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about this because I want to be absolutely clear on this so that there's some understanding here.
Okay. If anybody misunderstands, please give me a call, 866 451 1451. I'm Ken Lee. You are listening to The Way of Energy, and we'll be right back. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes, and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. All right, welcome back to The Way of Energy, how emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. You are listening on BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. I welcome listeners to call in and offer their opinions and observations, too. The number is 866-451-1451. Grab a pen. The number again is 866-451-1451. And before we went on break, we were talking about guns and making distinct the distinctions between intentions now and how intentions are the driving force for violence. Now, if a person only had a knife available to him and wanted to commit murder, no one could stop him. He would find a way. In fact, if you want to be honest about statistics, more people are killed by knives than with guns. The gun is just a tool, just like a knife or a sword, a bat, fire or rocks. Oh, well, let's not forget about the hammer. What a wonderful lethal weapon that is. But we don't see people wanting to make these things illegal or infringe on the rights of people to possess them. So why is the gun the target of level one and two energies? And is it because they want to take the ability of people to protect themselves from level one and two energies? I would think so, because level one and twos believe that everybody is out to get them. Now, here's an interesting story. Now, you know, the United Kingdom has probably some of the toughest gun control laws that there is. And no one is actually allowed to carry one. But now they have enacted restrictions on knives because knife violence is so high. You see, criminals will find a way to kill you. And taking away your ability to defend yourself only makes things worse. So... So why is the gun the target of level one and two energies? Well, first and foremost, they have a bad sense of property and they conceive that nothing is ever really owned. That means they can take it from you if they want to. How that plays out in the world is in the United States, if you make money, they take it from you and give it to someone who doesn't make money. And they call it social justice or distribution of wealth. Really? Now, does it really seem fair that you can work and make a great life for yourself as much as possible, and then the, at any moment the government can take it away from you and give it to someone else? We've seen them do this time and time again, even with real property. So 
I hope we establish that the gun is just the tool used by someone wanting to kill, right? Okay. So what about the rights written in the Constitution of the United States? Because everyone is perfectly fine with the First Amendment being used in any way possible, and it quite possibly could be the responsible for the destruction of many more lives than guns have ever been responsible for. How many wars have been started because of words? How many religions have killed each other because of words printed in a document? How many personal lives were destroyed because of lies printed in the news media? But no one is looking to suppress that. Well, not out in the open anyway. What is political correctness? Isn't that suppression of free speech? I mean, I was raised that mankind means everybody, not just man. But just because the, the word has man in it, it is now sexist? Really? Whatever happened to educating people on language? Aren't there different meanings? Doesn't the same sounding word have different meanings? Like two, two and two. Okay. And would. All right. So consider this. All rights under the Constitution can only be supported and upheld by people with guns. Right? Consider that. If a person wants to take away or suppress your religious freedom and your freedom of speech, how are you going to keep that? If a soldier wants to occupy your house in times of peace, how are you going to stop that? If the government wants to come into your house at any time and at any moment and search your house, who would stop that? How is it stopped? The only way that it gets stopped is by people with guns. Okay, so I got it. The government will stop people from infringing on your rights, right? Now think about that for a moment. If those of you that want the government to provide your safety, I want you to really think about this, okay? Do you trust the government? If you do, why? What have they done to demonstrate their trustworthiness? And if you don't, why would you want to give away your only means of protecting yourself from them? It is what the founders view as a tyrannical government. It is our duty to make sure that this country never falls into the hands of tyrants. So – I, I, I hope I'm making this this really clear and I'm hoping I'm I'm getting it into your heads that the right for us and it's a right. It's a right for us to keep and bear arms. If it is taken away from us, all of your other rights that you hold so dearly to are going to go away. They will because those of us that have guns are the only ones that will be protecting you and protecting your ability to keep all those other rights. All right, so I hope I didn't beat that too much. So let's get deep into our discussion about solving the energy levels. Now, we have a lot of serious problems happening throughout the world and all of these conflicts are level one and two energies. We know this. We also know that most people in powerful positions are at level one and two energies also. And we see this playing out in the world. Republicans and Democrats going back and forth, not resolving anything. And when the conservative comes in to try to make things happen, they are mobbed by the establishment and crushed out of office. Time and time again, we see this played out in front of our eyes. Notice the distinctions that I made here between Republicans and Democrats with conservatives. See, there's a difference. There are many Republicans at level one and two energy levels that are not conservatives. They say they are, but they're not. Conservative, by definition, by definition, look up the word, by definition, it is level four energy. And we define that in the first show. Now, an honest question. Can level one and two opponents get anything done that will benefit anyone besides just themselves or special interest groups? I would say they can't. Because it's not their nature to agree to any betterment of anyone outside their energy level. Do they agree on some things? Well, sure they do. But only if it is to destroy something of another's. That's how it all plays out in the world. 
But how do we fix this? Well, we fix this by coming by becoming aware of the energy levels that we're at right now and then take steps to improve the average resonating level of the planet. In a moment, you'll have my final comments. I appreciate you being here. I am Ken Lee. You are listening on The Way of Energy. And we'll be right back. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. All right. Welcome back to The Way of Energy, how emotional energy guides the way we live our lives. I'm your host, Ken Lee, and you are listening on BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. Hey, I want to remind everyone to check out my Way of Energy website. Get to know us a little bit better there. And uh, the Women's Leadership Summit is still going, but it'll be closing soon. So if you want to listen to some very inspiring stories, go to www.thewayofenergy.org and hear these inspiring stories. You'll be glad you did. And while you're there, check out my book. You get a free copy of it, Combat Lifesaver for the Mind. It's a practical guide to walking your way out of feeling depressed. If you know of anyone who seems to be stuck in the dumps, the guidance in my book will really help. All right, you. Yes, I'm pointing at you because you need to wake up and come to present time. You continue to live in the past as if it's anything, if, as if it has anything to do with today. So let me tell you, and now get this. In fact, the past literally does not exist. It's not there. The best scientists and investigators in the world cannot find it. Don't, you can try to find it, but all you'll see is the shadows of what you think was there, but it's not there. You're making it up of what you think it was, and you don't really know because you're bringing it into the present from your memory. And we know how reliable a memory is, right? But And you've also been told things that have happened in the past through the eyes of someone who has blurred vision also. So if you are using the past to justify your behavior today, then you are living a lie. The past is not there. It never was and never can be. Now take a moment to consider this. If you wipe out parts of your past and never have to be concerned about it again, what would it be like? Would you select only the good memories that you wanted? I mean, what would that mean to you? How would that play out in your life? What if you could go, pat, go into your past and, and erase all the terrible events that happened to you? How would that play out in your life? How would that work out in your world? Would you keep the events that were good? Or, and would you throw away the ones that were bad? What would you do? Honestly, the choice is really yours. 
So as we go through our daily lives, we must consider where we are coming from and what is our education and viewpoint and what is our resonating level at the time of our observations so we can evaluate our world for proper responses. All of these things must be considered when responding to any situation. If you don't, you could fall into witch hunts and rumors to identify your truth. And the truth is never inflated with verbs or adjectives. It is a statement of what is. Mm. We live in a world where it seems the media is designed to keep us in a state of confusion, anger, and fear. But we can free ourselves from these illusions as we learn the emotional, how emotional energy levels influences our lives. Most of the information transmitted through the media is actually projections cast from the observer. It is their point of view and not of the subject we are referring to. For, so for some, this knowledge may be difficult to accept, but I believe by revealing the emotional components of an event will be empowering to the benefit of all humanity. Emotional energy is a big part of our understanding of our world. Opening our eyes to it can help us uncover something inside us, perhaps a strength we didn't know we had and insights that never came to us before. Understanding gives us the courage to evaluate our beliefs in a, in a way that can open the door for positive change, not just for us personally, but across all human dynamics. And remember, we are meaning-making machines. We put the meaning to everything in our lives. And our lives are actually empty and meaningless. Consider it a habit of filling your life with meanings of love and light. And remember, the past literally does not exist. And you can make a new day today, starting brand new. Thank you all very much for listening. I hope to see you again next week when we will analyze another exciting event. I am Ken Lee. Love and light. This has been The Way of Energy with Ken Lee. The key to success is applying the optimal solution without violating the rights of others. This idea creates a win-win situation across the greatest number of dynamics. So join Ken each week here on The Way of Energy. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.